Okay, thanks for making it this far. This is not going to be as long as the last one. Um, just got to finish the poem with stanza five. Um, this is where everything comes together and we understand what it is that the speaker is wishing for. Um, again, we're picking up on that tone from stanza four. He's building on that tone of imploration, um, sort of this wishing, wanting, this longing, um, you might even call it a wistful longing. Um, he says, make me thy lyre, even as the forest is, on this first line. A lyre is a harp, and so we have a, a nice metaphor or simile, since there's the as. Um, the forest is like the lyre of the wind, so the trees in the forest might be like the strings of the lyre, and when the wind blows, those trees shake and quiver and make pleasing sounds. So he wants to be um, such as that forest. Um, it's also um, related to the art of being a poet. Um, he wants inspiration. He wants to sing the music inspired by the power of nature and the west wind. So to be a poet is to be a liar. Um, and the earliest poets actually were accompanied by the liar. Um, if you remember the videos of old Beowulf, we watched when the Shope is um, reciting the verses with um, some version of a harp in his hand. Second line, what if my leaves are falling like its own? Um, this could be a suggestion of what, how much time do I have left? My leaves are falling um, like the leaves of the forest. What if, what if my seasons are um, coming to an end? The tumult of thy mighty harmonies. Again, more musical um, referencing here. The tumult of thy mighty harmonies will take from both a deep autumnal tone, sweet though in sadness. Be thou, spirit fierce, my spirit. Be thou me, impetuous one. So he wants the spirit, the fierce spirit of the west wind to become his spirit. Um, the impetuous nature of the west wind. Impetuous means um, willing to react um, in, in maybe an unpredictable uh, emotional type of way. Um, he wants that same quality in himself. Um, it's a quality of creativity, perhaps. Drive my dead thoughts over the universe like withered leaves to quicken a new birth. Again, here we have this idea that um, he wants his poetry to be something that is uh, lasting beyond its life, and the West Wind has the power to preserve, to provide an opportunity for a new birth. And then he goes on to say, and by the incantation of this verse, incantation means the telling, the, it's what I'm doing now, I'm incanting, I am, in a sense, singing the verse. Um, by the incantation of this verse, Scatter as from an un unextinguished hearth, ashes and sparks, my words among mankind. Important to note that we have a new image here of that of fire, ashes, and sparks. Um, we have had um, images of magic, we've had um, imagery of music, the cycles of nature, autumn, and now this idea of fire is introduced. And he wants his words to be like sparks um, scattered from a hearth um, among mankind. Be through my lips to unawakened earth the trumpet of a prophecy. Okay, he's asking if he can be with his poetry a prophet. Um, again, the musical metaphor, a trumpet of prophecy. Um, and this echoes back with references of, of, you know, the clarion of spring earlier, 
the deep autumnal tone um, and something about, oh yeah, harmonies up here. And here's a great finishing section to the poem. Oh wind, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? So we have a rhetorical question here. And um, it's a question that raises some hope. Um, it's not all about the death of winter. Winter is necessary, but spring is something that we always can count on to follow the death of winter. Um, so is he uh, suggesting that perhaps, you know, humanity might be going through some sort of, sort of bleak period of time and that some sort of rebirth is on the horizon? Might he be the prophet of some kind of rebirth? Um, all of these things are uh, indicative of this hope that um, it's not all about despair and death, even though those things do exist. Um, religion, question mark. Um, there's nothing overtly religious about this poem. Um, there are mythological illusions. Certainly there is this spiritual, almost paganistic um, mood up in the poem about you know, his wanting to connect with some elemental force that's quite pagan. But there's nothing about um, religion per se. Um, also note that the tone picks up a little bit more um, with these exclamations, um, these sort of imperatives, these really direct requests where he says, be through my lips to the unawakened earth, the trumpet of a prophecy. This is an imperative. Um, you know, he's making clear what he wants, maybe demanding it. Um, also, um, we see a lot of diction that is linking the speaker to the wind. Um, let's see, drive my dead thoughts over the universe like withered leaves to quicken a new birth. That would be an example of that. Um, so that concludes um, the analysis for the poem. You're going to find in the class drive folder these notes if you want to just use the, the slides for a review, as well as a, uh, a separate copy of the poem itself so you could read it all at once. Um, hope it's been helpful, and thanks for taking the time, and uh, that's all.